Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the world's greatest debate, which is what is the true number one best beginner snake? So num first off, I'm not going to say my personal opinion, whatever that is. I'm not going to give con con uh, 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 a conclusive number one. I'm just going to talk about both of them a little bit and kind of the pluses or minuses of both. And so that way it's kind of up to whoever it is that's looking for the new snake. So best beginner snake. It really always comes down to one of two. Number one, the ball python. This is Utah. He's our pie ball ball python. Great little animal ambassador. And most of the time he's not actually acting like a ball. So that'll work for this video. And the other is the corn snake. With me today is Sierra. Uh, not exactly. Oh, there he is. There's a little head. He's, uh, he's just kind of cruising around today. So Sierra is an aneurysmic corn snake. And he has a great disposition. So we're going to use him for this video. Uh, although he's a little bit long and thin. So, I'm going to talk about them both. These both species of snakes make fantastic pets. They're both stay a manageable size, rarely exceeding over four feet long. Now, some ball pythons can get, you know, upwards of five, six feet for like a big, big girl. And, you know, it's, it's fairly unheard of, but I, I've heard that like a couple uh, corn snakes, like probably like creamsicles that probably have a bit of rat snake in them can exceed four feet. But either way, they both stay a very manageable size. They both have great temperaments. As a whole, they're very docile snakes. You know, just like people, there's individuals. There can be buttheads in both of them. And I have buttheads of both. But they're both very docile snakes. They're both easy to handle. They're both very tolerant of handling of people. But basically, the big thing that comes down to is kind of what you're looking for in your first snake. So with ball and, uh, oh, sorry, let, 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 me, let me back up a little bit. Um, they are both very readily available. They're in pretty much every pet store, either big box chain or a specialty reptile store, kind of everywhere across America. They've both been captive bred in America for a very long time, so you don't have to deal with imports, although these guys are native anyway, so you don't have to deal with an import, or really wild cots in general, I guess you could say for these guys. Um, they come in a wide variety of colors. You know, with ball pythons, you don't really need to talk about that. There's so many crazy ones. And corn snakes, to be completely honest, have almost as many crazy things going on. They just don't have as many nuts names as a lot of these guys. But, I mean, there's several lines of albino, types of anaries, charcoal, lava, molly, all these crazy things that a lot of people don't really think about with corn snakes. Um, I'm actually going to put one of these guys down here in just a second. So, as I was saying before, before I got a little ahead of myself is what are you looking for in your first snake? First up, the corn snake. This snake's been around in the pet hobby for decades. It's probably one of the first ones. It's a lot of people's very first uh, very first snake. Probably not so much these days because ball pythons are so, pro so prevalent, but you know, anyone who's been keeping reptiles for a long time, they usually say their first snake was a corn snake um, or a garter snake or whatever. But so these guys, the main reason why these guys could say they could be theoretically a better beginner snake is their actual husbandry. So both of them are pretty easy to take care of, but corn snakes are, I would say, by far the most forgiving snake that you can have. So there's basically a learning curve for every new pet that you get, which includes cats, dogs, or whatever that you get. There's a bit of a learning curve. Um, and corn snakes as a whole are probably the most forgiving snake that you can have as a first time pet and learning how to take care of a reptile. Um, you know, because they are endemic to North America, they are more used to more temperate things. So if you have, for the most part, the, you know, room temps are perfectly fine, but they still need that warmer hot spot into the low 90s. They still need water, they still need humid hides, they still need places to climb and move. But as far as, you know, humidity and temps go, they're a lot more forgiving than ball pythons. Um, you know, they, they, they can put up with a lot. It may not necessarily be ideal, but you're not going to, you know, cause a lot of harm to them while you're figuring it out. You know, you don't have to deal with, with stuck sheds. Um, you don't have to deal with uh, really low humidity stuff. You don't have to worry about the heat being nearly as high. And then the next part is that as far as, you know, husbandry and taking care of them is feeding them. So we've already established that, you know, this is your first snake. You're going to get one. We've already, you know, come to terms that we have to feed it, you know, 100% protein-based meals, which means for rats, mice, chicks, and then sometimes even fish and frogs and lizards and stuff like that. But for the most part, when we're talking about keeping snakes in the hobby, 
and generally we're talking about mice and rats. Corn snakes as a whole are much better feeders. Very rarely do they ever go off feed, which means that, um, you know, if you're feeding them every 7 to 14 days or whatever your feeding schedule is, that when you're feeding them, they very rarely will refuse to eat whatever you're giving them. Um, corn snakes don't get that big. They're very slender bodied. Most of the time, you don't even need to give them rats. They can stay on mice their whole lives, which makes feeding them a lot easier. A lot of people complain that their ball python isn't eating, and that for a corn snake, that's not really something you ever really have to deal with. For the downside of corn snakes, I would say the reason why that a lot of people would prefer a ball python is that what it's called, a ball python. They just kind of sit there. As you can see, since I had him to the start of the video, he hasn't really stopped moving. I'm moving my hand around all around him so he's not freaking out, but he hasn't really stopped moving. And for a lot of people who are just kind of getting over that and really kind of starting to try to get into reptiles, who aren't quite used to that, and an animal that isn't going to move a whole lot and just kind of sits there and barely cruises around and moves very slowly and deliberately like a ball python, is a lot more comfortable while they kind of get used to that. A corn snake, while you know, as a whole, is a smaller animal, they're diurnal, they're colubrids, they're active, they're always moving, they're always cruising, which, you know, as someone who's not used to how a snake moves and behaves, that can be a little disconcerting for people. And the other final thing is that, like I said, they both are very docile, but sometimes corn snakes do have a little bit of a propensity to kind of, you know, oh, maybe this is food. Um, it doesn't really happen a whole lot, but that can happen sometimes where, you know, you're holding the snake. Usually once they're out of the enclosure, they're like, oh, okay, this isn't feeding time. But every once in a while, you will get one to go, oh, what is this? This feels soft. This is kind of warm. It may take kind of an investigative bite to see if it is food. Um, doesn't really happen very often. I've never had it happen with any of my corn snakes. It has happened to other corn snakes in the past. And with like kings and rats, it can happen more. Um, but that's really the... The pluses and minuses of the corn snake. Now we'll move on to the ball. Ball pythons. You know, that's probably the number one for most people's lists when they're talking about, like, the best beginner snake, their personal favorites, things like that. And there's a lot of reasons why they are everyone's number one beginning pet. I don't need to go into too much detail because everyone kind of knows it. You know, they're fairly docile. They don't move. They stay a manageable size. They come in all sorts of fun, crazy colors. The only thing that I would ever say that why there really needs to be a conversation had about which may or may not be the best beginner snake is its husbandry care. You need to be a lot more attentive to dialing in their husbandry and things like that when it comes to a ball python versus a corn snake. So number one, humidity. No matter where you are, there's always pictures, always people asking, what's up with my ball python? It's, they're always covered in stuck shed. It's a consistent problem. That's the reason why tubs and stuff have gotten so prolific is that it's easier to maintain that humidity. Um, but if you do get that humidity dialed in, that consistent 60 to 70%, they're shedding fine, then hey, cool, perfect. It's awesome. These guys are great, great pets. The other downside is that these guys are by far the most notorious picky eaters. Not that they're very specific, like some snakes, like hognose and other things like that. They only want to eat lizards or frogs or they only want to eat birds. No, these guys just sometimes say, mm, no thanks, uh, I know this is this March, I won't eat till October. Bye. And that's something that can be very off-putting to a lot of first-time reptile keepers. I know it put me off for the first two. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing live, I'm doing frozen thaw, I'm trying to do it, all these other crazy things. And sometimes ball pythons just do that. In fact, it's kind of what happens to a lot of ball pythons in general once they kind of hit like that year and a half mark around that like six to 700 grams where they just kind of go, no, I'm not eating anymore. And that can be really off-putting for a lot of people. But if you can kind of get over that and you talk to people who've had them for a while and, you know, as long as the snake isn't losing weight, then you're going to be just fine. And that's really the only difference or the downside to ball pythons versus corn snakes is that they're husbandry and they're finicky eaters. So there you go, guys. That's, you know, the, that's, that's the argument. They're both great snakes. I would recommend either one of them to say this is the best beginner pet. Am I going to say that these are your only two choices? Absolutely not. There's plenty of other snakes. My first snake, in fact, was a ball python. After that, I moved to a boa constrictor. And then I went a little hog wild getting all sorts of other different things. 
But, you know, that's not to say that one is better than the other. As we just kind of talked about, it's entirely up to you guys. It's, do you want a snake that moves? Do you want a pretty snake? Both snakes are pretty. Do you want one that's, you know, that you can deal with kind of a finicky eater, but you really like specifically one color? And there's nothing to say that you can't have more than one snake further down the road. But, any who's will be, that's the point of this one, is that it's not which is the better one, it's that these are both the best. You, it's entirely up to you what you want to do to make it your first pet snake. I love them all to death. I have them both. I'm always going to have them both. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You got something from it. If you have any further questions down the road, I get a lot of stuff about humidity and feeding ball pythons and stuff like that. Um, hit me down in the comments if you have anything like that. Please like and subscribe if you can. Hit that bell notification. Always really helps. And I hope you guys are having a good time with everything. And I'll catch you next time.